All right, so um, I like soccer. I don't know if you like soccer. Soccer is awesome. If you don't like soccer, I would encourage you to like soccer because it's it's really an incredible sport, um, filled with amazing amazing athleticism and um, sportsmanship. Anyway, imagine the game of soccer where there's no such thing as out of bounds. You can just kick the ball wherever you want, and um, you know no throw-ins or anything like that. Uh, if if the ball is kicked and it's uh, it's a long kick and it's racing towards the sideline, you really don't have to run fast to to get it before it goes out of bounds because there's no such thing as out of bounds. And uh, you know you can imagine what would happen. Uh, you know, players might go miles away from the field. In fact, what would it even mean to call something the field? Because if there's no sidelines, basically you consider the whole world to be the field. Um, it would be chaos, right? It would be no fun. Uh, the players would disappear off the edge of um, the field, if it could be called that. And, um, you know, there'd be no reason. Basically, it wouldn't be fun at all, right? So it's important for games to have rules, um, and it's important to know. This is a rule. Rules basically s create a framework, which allows you to, to do amazing things. Um, because there are sidelines, and there's such a thing as you can't go out of bounds in soccer. That results in players running really super fast to get the ball before it goes out of bounds. And maybe even if they're if they have their uh, if they're facing the ball and their backs are towards the field um, and they're rushing to get the ball before it goes out of bounds because they want to you know keep the momentum of an awesome attack, then they might do an awesome bicycle kick or something. And then you know because they're forced into that constraint, that situation that's very difficult. They do some kind of incredible thing. Okay, all that to say. Um, What's the point of learning what an axiom or a postulate or a theorem or a corollary um, is in geometry? Well, the, these are kind of the rules or the framework or the the um, the sidelines, uh, the boundary lines of the field, um, which allow the game of geometry to happen. Um, so without these rules, uh, you know, it would be kind of mayhem. Just geometry really wouldn't mean anything. Um, and uh, so that's kind of the point. I mean, these are kind of weird words, right? Axiom, postulate, theorem, corollary. And usually when people are talking about them, it sounds really boring. Um, and all times, that actually is really boring. But uh, think of these as rules, or um, sometimes even discoveries based on other rules. And uh, so these are kind of the... Uh, the ideas that allow the game of geometry to happen. So let's go over what they mean. So that if you see them in a book, um, hopefully you're not working with a book that's just too focused on these sorts of things. Because, um, I don't, anyway, I'm getting off ta off topic here, but uh, it's important to know these words and recognize them and not not get too intimidated by them. Um, so an axiom is an unproved but but agreed upon, you know, generally agreed upon assumption, which applies to math in general. Um, so uh, proof is a big thing in geometry and in math in general, and actually in in the sciences even more generally than that. Um, um, proof is important. You can't just say whatever you want to say. I can't just say a triangle has 180 degrees because I say so. Um, some other guy might say, no, all triangles, the interior angles add up to 317 degrees. Well, uh, if, if you can just say whatever you want and say that's just what I believe, then it's chaos and it's not very fun and it doesn't mean anything. Okay, so proof proof is important, but you can't prove everything. And um, there are certain ideas that we've all basically decided um, can't be proven but we don't need to prove it because it's it's just so obvious and in fact we need to just agree that it's true so that we can prove other stuff and kind of move forward so an axiom is an unproved um, but agreed upon assumption which applies to math in general so for example um, if equals are added to equals the sums are equal so if x equals 20 and y equals 30 then x plus y equals 50 you know 20 plus 30 
pretty obvious, right? Um, but geometers and mathematicians and scientists in general um, want to prove things. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to, to, to have an awesome proof for this kind of thing. But we, we can basically just agree that, yeah, uh, let's just agree that that, that is true. We'll, we'll use that to prove other things. Okay, a postulate is an unproved but agreed upon assumption which applies to a specific discipline in math, such as geometry. So it's like an axiom, um, but it's more specific. So this axiom is true, you know, it's true for algebra, it's true for geometry, it's true for calculus, it's true for, for all of math. A postulate would be something that's more specific to whatever discipline you're working in. Uh, in this case, we're looking at geometry. So um, here's a, a geometric postulate. Exactly one line can be drawn between two points. You know, I've got a point here and a point here. Uh, imagine those are actually points, they're kind of blobs. Uh, there's only one line I can draw, and there's exactly one line that I can draw between them. Uh, can I prove that? No, but can we all agree that that's true? Uh, and then move forward? Yeah. All right, a theorem is a statement which has been proved on the basis of either other theorems which have been proved, um, or on the basis of postulates, postulates um, or and or axioms. So we start with these axioms, like start with this very basic starting place. For example, um, if if equals are added to equal, the sums are equal, or exactly one line can be drawn between points. You start with those, and you build up the system. Um, you go step by step, and so if this is true, then, then that must be true, and then that must be true, and then therefore this must be true. Um, so it's based, it's proven um, based on either other theorems that have been proven to be true so that you can use them or postulates and axioms um, that we assume to be true uh, to use in our proof of theorems. So for example um, I'm sure you've heard of the Pythagorean theorem which is that if um, if a triangle is a uh, right triangle then and we call the sides a, b, and c then a squared plus b squared equals c squared where c is the uh, hypotenuse th the longest side. Okay, so um, Pythagoras proved this, um, and this, so this is a well-proven theorem. We know it's true, not just because we're all assuming it's true, but because it's been proven on the basis of, of other things. And so now we can all use it, uh, which is very fun, right? Um, a corollary is a statement which follows naturally from a theorem. Um, you could call it a theorem, actually, uh, because it, it is proven. You know, it's not just an assumption, but it's considered less quote-unquote interesting than a theorem. It's something that's like sort of obviously true from a theorem so it's not you know it's not that special in its own right. Um, here's an example uh, and it's actually the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so if, if triangle ABC is a right triangle then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well from that we can see that if, if we've got three side lengths and um, they have this relationship a squared plus b squared equals c squared then that triangle must be a right triangle you know it just follows naturally from the theorem so those are axioms postulates theorems and corollaries and so now when you see those in your geometry book or um, your teacher talks about them you'll know what they're talking about